it's uh, it's 401, so we'll um, we can call the meeting to order. Uh, so welcome uh, to uh, to the school building committee meeting uh, on August 6th. Uh, as a reminder, this meeting is being recorded, uh, taped and recorded, and could be replayed on WRPS or other media outlets. Um, for the first um, I don't, uh, first item agenda, uh, we've got the approval of the minutes uh, from the June 18th. Uh, has everyone had a chance to take a look at them? Motion to approve. Second. Got a motion. Uh, motion by Julie, got a second by uh, Chris. Uh, I'll do a roll call. Um, uh, Christine? Yes. Uh, Chris? Benika? Yes. Julie? Yes. Doug? Yes. Tim? Yes. Uh, Jill? Yes. Alan? Yes. Mark? Yes. Doug? Yes. Emily? I need to abstain since I wasn't at the last meeting. Uh, okay, yep. Uh, Emily? I need to abstain. All right. No, that's right. You weren't there. Yeah. Uh, Jared? Yes. Uh, Danielle? Danielle? Danielle, are you there? Can you hear us? Hello, can you hear me? Yep. All right. Uh, Michelle wasn't there. Uh, Jane? Yes. All right. I believe that is everyone. So the uh, meeting minutes are approved. All right. So the uh, second item, uh, we'll go, uh, third item, we'll go into uh, the design update uh, and we'll, uh, we'll turn this over to the design team. And if everyone could uh, mute, uh, we're getting a little bit of feedback. Um, that way it will uh, make it a little easier for them. Chris, can you give me permission to share, please? Lorraine, you should have permission. It should be good to go. No, it's supposed to say no participant screen sharing. Now you should be good to go. There we go. Thank you. All right, can everyone see that? Yep, okay. We're going to go into a design update. Marianne is going to take us through some new renderings, some new images we have for you tonight. A good, a good night, everybody, or good, good afternoon. Um, <laughs> here we have the latest uh, fresh out of the oven renderings uh, of the school. You might not see a lot of different because it's a lot of subtle uh, detailing development that has been going around. Uh, we have the front entrance. Uh, we hide the trees from this so that it's visible. Uh, we show the metal panel. We carry the overhang over the, the volume of the maker space. Uh, we, uh, this image doesn't show it too, too well, but we have uh, the brick pattern on the, on the wall uh, next to the door. Um, here's an a aerial view of, a, of the whole campus. And here we have a back view. Can you move to the next one, please? Then we have some of the courtyard and learning common, common images. Uh, to the left, we have the courtyard images. The, the top one is looking towards the entry on the north. The bottom one is looking on the south. Uh, you can see the, the pattern of the brick uh, on this. Uh, Elevate on these views, and, and you can see some of the, the, the um, greenery that has been incorporated into, into the design. And then we have uh, the learning common image uh, on, on between the pods uh, here with some of the latest uh, site developments as well. Next. Now we have some of the interior spaces, uh, the media center to the right, and uh, the dining area to the left. Uh, you can see 
how you know we have done all the wood treatment around uh, we have some movement on the ceiling going on uh, we did uh, refine a little bit the, the the clear stories so that they are cleaner and work better with it with the big trusses that we have there we also have some media center renderings you have seen some of those uh, recently and it's incorporating the, the color scheme that that was selected and also we did some work on the ceilings to highlight the geometry a little bit and I'm moving my mouse like I think you're seeing my mouse <laughs> uh, here are some images of the ent main entry stair uh, it's very open you can see through we have some some uh, wooden seating area um, right in front of the door uh, very nice open airy space there um, and and then to the right you have a classroom and the and the classroom yeah. commons area as well i just like to pause here for a minute because there's uh, just when we get into uh, you know sort of next steps in business i want to draw your attention to this graphic at the end of the main corridor when you come in this is what we refer to as environmental graphics it's done with a film and our graphic designers are currently coming up with concepts that we're going to uh, propose to you throughout the building. Um, what this means is we provide a level five finish in some areas on the drywall and this is a, a vinyl film in some cases think of it as a almost like a wallpaper that gets applied to the wall. It can go on glass, it can go on the drywall and it really is to try and um, bring some artwork and some liveliness to the corridor so there'll be some of it will be static, some of it might be active where we can provide more sensory options. So um, when we get to new business, I will be looking for volunteers to work with us on some content for that. So I just want to draw your attention to that as we go through. All right, that is our design update. Sean, you're up. Sean. Thank you, Lorraine. All right. Um, so over the past uh, three weeks, the estimators have had the drawing package that SMA provided. Um, and we have gone through and reconciled the estimates with both our estimating teams. Just a reminder, uh, uh, the OPM has an estimator, the architect has an estimator, and the requirement of the MSBA is that we get those estimates within 5%. Uh, so this is the overall uh, look of it. We're gonna break this down in the following slides to show you piece by piece. But the construction subtotal reconciled to within a percent and a half uh, so both estimators are within a percent and a half of each other. Uh, that meets the re requirements of the MSBA. So we're, uh, we're okay to submit uh, our package to the MSBA based on that. So Lorraine, if you go to the next slide, we'll go to the building. Um, so this is line by line, our estimates, and it shows just a really comparison for what PM&C, who is the OPM estimate, and what Mia Coda uh, came up with for each of these items. Um, uh, it shows the variance between uh, the, the two estimates and 5% is our target number, and we are under 5% on not only on the entire estimate, but also on each line item, and that is uh, where we need to be. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, as we keep going down, we can see some other pieces of the building and some pieces of the estimates, and if you have questions about any particular line item, um, we can do that. Lauren, can you just switch, go to the next page? Um, so here's the total building. These are the what we call the direct costs. So these are the costs of the work uh, in place, the, the, the cost of putting the building up, not including the overhead and the contingencies and all the other. And those numbers are within a quarter, about a quarter of a percent apart. So they're, they're pretty close. If you look in the site work, uh, the building site work here, you see some ups and downs on these packages. Um, but um, I, I it, it, sometimes it's just a function of the estimator in uh, you know where they hold some estimators hold costs differently so we do our best to get them all in the same buckets but once we're within five percent that's that's where we need to be so we're comfortable and then the, the total is what we really care about and with being in 0.26 percent within each other uh, we're in good shape on top of that we have contingencies and bonds and insurances uh, general conditions general requirements overhead and profit escalation um, and we put in some COVID-19 and the reason that these are a little bit different is some of the estimators look at escalation a little bit differently. One estimator may take bid prices um, and put escalation on those. Some other, uh, um, and others might take older bids and escalate those themselves. So there's different methodologies, the way they come up with it. But at the end of uh, our estimate, we are within about a percent and a half of each other, which is pretty close. So 
uh, going through our day long meeting with all of the estimators and all the engineers and the design team and, and the OPM, uh, we go through each of these in detail line by line and to get to with one and a half percent through that uh, course is what we need to and it's what we did do. So we're happy that the uh, not only are the estimates within a percent and a half of each other, but they're also under they're beneath the budget that we have for the MSBA. So the, our total project budget is a, about $30,000 right now less um, than our MSBA budget, which is good. We, we want to be less. We know we're never going to be right at at the budget, we want to be at or under, and thirty thousand dollars on eighty-six million dollar project is is pretty good. That's that's uh, we're we're happy with that. Um, the one thing we should note is that our contingency uh, and design pricing right now is at three point eight five percent in our estimate of record. Who is the designer's estimate? Um, that is a good number. Uh, normally, we, we like to be around three percent, a little north of three percent, in there at a sixty percent drawing. So, uh, we're happy that that number is a strong number. That uh, when we start going into some other discussions. Um, about alternates and things like that it just gives us a little more comfort level of what if we want to include anything else in here that's where uh, that that budget is going to come from is that uh, design and pricing contingency um, we also have 2.75 percent escalation so we're escalating from here until basically bid which is about five months from now um, so that's roughly five to six percent of escalation we're including in we feel that that's a good number we've heard from the estimators that because of covid and because of the economy that they're seeing um, n numbers coming in favorably off of estimates and that that's baked into this price. Uh, but I think we're very comfortable with that six, uh, five, five to 6% uh, escalation uh, to bid time. Um, so that being said, we are at budget. Uh, we feel good about the amount of contingencies we have in here and we feel good about submitting to, this to the MSBA and moving on to the 90% uh, drawings. Um, so is there any questions on the estimate? Anything we need to go through? All right. Um, so value management, we, we've talked about uh, some value management items. And uh, just a reminder, value management can go up or down. It doesn't mean that we're saving money. Uh, they can increase or decrease the value. So we have our alternates that we continue to carry. These are being carried as pricing exercises at this point. We have uh, the new fencing and bat, uh, backstop for the girls' softball field. We have the screens at the roof. And we have the um, exterior wall type, uh, some exterior wall type changes that we price out as alternates. So our recommendation would be on these alternates to carry them in the base scope for the 90% drawings and then carry them as a deduct alternate for the bid, which means we, we think we have enough in that design and pricing contingency to carry these items that we, you know, we're always targeting, we always wanted to get in, but we we're just a little bit nervous about the budget on them. We put them in the base scope at this point and we add a line in there for a deduct alternate. So if you know, we're gonna get a 90% bid, and a 90% estimate, so we can pull them out if we need to. And if not, we will bid them out as alternates so that if um, the bid comes in higher than we want, this is where we're gonna start value managing. We're gonna have three items right off the bat that we can pull off. Uh, so we don't have to go back and redesign and, and pull other scope off of it. So uh, it's more of a strategy to say, instead of adding into the project, let's keep it in the base scope and take it out if we, if we need to. Um, we've done in the past with good success, and I think with our design and pricing contingency at that three and a half percent number, we feel pretty confident that uh, we can include those uh, in at least in, from a, from a pricing standpoint into our base scope, and then we'll pull them. We'll identify those as alternates to be deducted uh, in the bid environment. Can I just want to review a graphic for alternates for you because we have. There's any questions about how that how that strategy works? Uh, so uh, just for, from the bidding perspective, uh, SMA, the architect, will identify which trades have cost within those items. They'll set them up as alternates. So when they give us their bid, they will give us their real bid pricing. Uh, and then we'll be able to uh, evaluate at time of bid whether or not we can you know, pull this out to get to budget or they're in the budget and we can just leave them in the project. John, I, I think that's the right way to go, uh, particularly where we're seeing some... Uh, some favorable uh, estimates coming in. Uh, it's easy to keep it in and, you know, it's it the last minute. that I can't hear anybody? Can you hear me? I can hear you, Rich, but I don't think everyone can hear everyone. Uh, one second. I'm sorry. I can hear you, Rich. Oh, sorry. I can hear you, Rich. Go ahead. I'm good no, now. Was, okay. No, I was saying it. I think that's the way to go, um, particularly where we're getting some, uh, some favorable numbers, numbers back uh, on the estimates and certainly... Um, 
you know, with COVID, uh, we may continue to get some favorable uh, estimates uh, coming in. And, and uh, you know, if we keep this in, uh, we can always take it out if something changes. But uh, I, I just my opinion, I, I think we uh, we keep this through the, uh, you know, all the way through uh, the, the drawings and the estimates. Can you hear me? Can you hear me talking about? I can hear you, Lorraine. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Yep. Okay. I just wanted to introduce alternate three. We hadn't talked about it before, so Mariana, um, I'm going to let you walk through what alternate three means. You oh, yeah. you're on. Okay, so alternate three wants to replace, it's suggesting to replace the CMU on the back, of what we call the back of the house, the, the lower area that faces the field south of the building for brick and it's this area circled here, and you can see in these two renderings how it looks if it's CMU and how it will look if it's break. It's more um, incorporated into the whole building design if we go break. Uh, we initially selected the CMU as a, a value engineering kind of measure, uh, but we strongly believe that it's a better design if we can carry the break. So I think one of the aspects here is when we started the project, there's often a back of house. And as this project has evolved and the playground is here and we have the site um, circulation around the field, there's really no back to this building. So there was some cost savings idea, you know, CMU is cheaper than brick, but it's such a limited area. And I'm just going to go back so you can see the price the estimators had it at, $48,000. Really, we think that this is, you know, a good use of the funds to look at this as being the same brick as the rest of the building, provide that continuity around so there really doesn't feel like there's a back of this house. Um, and so our, as the design team, we'd like to bring that to the table and, and recommend that be included as one of the ad alternates. Think, alternate. CMU stands I think that's a great masonry. idea. I'm sorry, Alan, I just want to let you know, CMU is concrete masonry unit, so it's uh, like a center block. I, I really like the idea. I do too. Yeah, I think I'd like to see the whole building the same same brick. Great. All right, great. So we will keep that as is, um, unless we hear any objections. We'll keep it as in as a pricing exercise, and if we need to, we can, can we can consider taking it out at a later date. This is back to you, Sean. muted. All right, we're going to go through uh, just a little show you where we're at with our timeline. Um, so right now, uh, we are ready to submit a, a pending approval of a vote by the committee tonight, our 60% drawings to the MSBA. Um, and then pretty soon after this in October, we're going to start our bid qualification. Uh, so one of the things we need to start thinking about, uh, and I believe we'll have a meeting in between now and then is a pre qual committee. So you are required to um, by statute to have a pre-qualification committee. It needs to have at least one member from the design team, uh, three members from the district, and one of those members is someone from the OPM side. So really one designer, two district, one OPM at a minimum. Uh, we like to not keep it, make it a super large group, but if anybody would like to uh, join that group, they can. And the goal of that group is to review all of the uh, reference checks and all of the contractor qualifications uh, which we will, uh, PMA will be putting together uh, and see who's a qualified bidder for the project. So I guess the real first step is we'll review the qualification package. Uh, we've done this, we've done this a lot. We'll do it with the architect and we'll, we'll set uh, really points and standards for who is qualified to do this project. And uh, in certain things like have you, how many of these types of projects have you done in the past? Uh, you know, have you done schools before? Have you done projects of this size? And then there's also a reference component to it where we'll, we'll reach out for reference checks from their most recent projects and make sure they're a good contractor. We'll go through their DCAM file and we'll check their DCAM score ratings to make sure that they haven't failed any, uh, you know, they don't have any failures on file. And each of those components will add, uh, we'll, it'll be a point scale and we'll, we'll add them up and we'll, we'll try to evaluate to the best of our ability if a contractor is, uh, is qualified to do the work. And if they are, we will put them on our pre-qualification list. The only, the only contractors that will be allowed to bid on the trade contractor work are contractors on our pre-qualification list. So 
it really gives us an early sense of who's going to be going after this, how many people are going after it, and to make it, it's really our, our way to make sure that we have qualified uh, contractors on this project. Um, so uh, we're going to need two volunteers from the, com uh, the committee. We usually, we usually have two or three meetings uh, on this, and one will be to set the kind of to set the pre-qualification requirements. We'll send out the, the, the packages, we'll post it on the central register uh, for the state. We'll reach out to contractors that we worked with before uh, just to make sure they know that it's out there on the street. Uh, there's no shortage of that. People typically, once it hits the street, we get tons of emails looking for the packages. Uh, that'll go out, they will submit their qualifications to us. PMA will do a whole, we'll spend a week or two doing a whole bunch of reference checks to try to get as much information about the contractors as we can. And then we'll all sit um, and go through these and we will decide collectively if the contractor is qualified to work on the project. Um, so we'll look, we typically look for people um, from the industry, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, people who are good with numbers, people who like to you know, go, go through charts and look at you know, what, what, are, what is a good contractor, what is a qualification, and we'll present packages for all of those. Uh, normally we have them send them in paper, but I think because of COVID and all this stuff, I think it will, we're gonna recommend it be 100% electronic. Uh, we'll have it hosted on a server so anyone who wants to, whether or not you're on the committee, is welcome to download the information. And uh, it'll be up to that, that committee to decide the final list of who's qualified and who's not. Uh, so it, it is, a, I'll, I will say it is a balance between, we want to get a lot of contractors in because we want competitive bidding, but we also don't want contractors who have no business bidding the project, either it's too big for them or they have bad references and, and it's our chance to eliminate them from bidding the project. I'd like to volunteer, uh, Sean. All right, great. I'll do it, I'll do it with you, Mark. Fantastic. So we'll, we'll you, add you two, and, uh, you two, Rich, you wanna be on it? Uh, I, I know, I said thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, unfortunately at this point, um, I have, I have some time uh, constraints, um, so I wouldn't be able to do it. Sure. So we will uh, we'll get that together, and if anybody else decides that they'd like to be a part of it, or they'd uh, they'd like to just even sit down on the on the meetings, they will likely all be held virtually anyway. You're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, we will create the committee, um, and that will be the the voting members who vote on that but anyone is is welcome to uh to join that as long as the committee decides it's okay and i think that anybody um, in the committee would be Sean, are we going to do it as a working group uh i'll double check the regs on that we might have to uh no i think you might have to nominate the people uh, okay to do it. so um but if you want to do it i mean it, it won't hurt to nominate them now and just vote on it and then then we have it done we don't have to worry about it there's nothing that says you can't do that i'll make a motion nominate. to nominate mark Trump and alan cron to the um, whatever you just called that. Start yeah, at the yeah. bit of pre-qualification. The pre-qualification pre committee. Do I have a second? Um, motion? Is second. it amended to second. include Sean Burke from PMA? And then is it Lorraine? Is it going to be you or Mariana? Are they still on? Oh. Who is it, Mark? Is it your? It's me, Sean. Lorraine. Okay, so if you could just amend it to include Lorraine Finnegan and Sean Burke, um, and then we'll, we'll just be covered. CYA. As amended. Great. Do I have a second? I second that. Rachel second. Chris. Second by Chris Benica. Uh, I'll do a roll call. Uh, Jared? Yes. Emily? Yes. Christine? True story. Uh, Curtis? Jane, one time I spent nine hours. Christine, Flaherty? Yes. Julie Schaefer? Yes. Doug Lapp? Yes. Tim? Yes. Jill? Yes. Alan? Yes. Mark? Yes. Doug? Yes. All right, let's wrap up our feature group coverage here with Tiger. Who, who have I missed? Uh, Danielle? I think there's going to be much drama with the putting. Tiger. Kurt Danielle? Tiger Danielle, can you hear us? I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm pretty sure it's Jane Hackett who's playing the golf in the background. Jane? Yeah. All right. Jane? <laughs> Jane, can you hear us? I can. Uh, we're, we're taking a vote. No, I know. I thought you were waiting. I thought you were waiting for Danielle. I'm a yes. 
All right, Michelle? Yes. Trish Pierce? Very bad connection, and yeah, so forgive me if you lose me. Okay. Danielle, can you hear us? So I don't maybe she's uh, off, so we'll uh, we'll have her as an abstention. Uh, and I'm a yes. I'm Rich, I'm a yes too. You miss me. What's that? I'm a yes too. All right, sorry, I missed you. Did we get everyone else? All right, so it's unanimous. Okay. So the next one is just the invoices. Um, so this invoice register will include two months of invoices because we pushed our mid-July meeting to uh, August. So this is really the, actually the June and the July invoices uh, for the project. So we have two invoices from PMA. We have two invoices from SMMA. Uh, those are uh, prescribed. They're part of our original cash flow and they're all, uh, they all match what we, it's part of our original budget. They're, everything's above board on those. Uh, the other two, Emory Engineering and Gillian Associates, are the town's uh, third-party consulting firms that deal with the permitting. Uh, I believe you don't have a, uh, uh, I don't know the right term, uh, a department in-house that uh, does this for you. So you hire outside people. That's uh, that's typical of a lot of smaller towns. Um, yeah, we don't have our own in-house engineering department, so we right. uh, we go outside. Um, so for you know, for 2,700 bucks, it's not, not a bad deal for to go through those permitting things. Um, we, uh, the MSBA does not reimburse for these, but we had some money left over in our uh, feasibility study that we can use to pay for this, which wouldn't be reimbursable anyway. So it's, it's almost a, a wash in that end. Uh, and then the last one is for Verizon for an engineering study that we are moving some Verizon equipment uh, from across Colonel Duffy Way onto the site. And uh, this is part of that study. And I believe it, once you set up services, it actually gets credited back to your account, but you pay them the upfront and then they give you the credit after it's done. Um, as long as you do the work and, you, and you, they provide you service. So uh, we've gone through these and reviewed them uh, and, and we're, we're good with them. Um, I also emailed out the invoice packet. If anyone has any uh, questions, it has all the invoices, all the backup for this. Um, so you're, you can certainly ask me any questions about any of these invoices. Sean, what did Verizon do again? They move what? Some equipment across the street? They haven't done anything yet. We are moving some uh, some equipment that's across Colonel Duffy Way uh, because there's there's a road realignment that's happening there and it would be into the Verizon equipment. So this cost is for the engineering to move that. So we haven't moved it yet. It's going to be moved as part of the construction project, but it's the Verizon engineering design cost to move uh, move that equipment. Okay, thank you. And it was actually going to be moved closer to in a butter's house, but uh, SMA's uh, civil engineering and design team really looked at it and they're gonna actually move it across the street away from the house. So it's kind of, it's one of those nice benefits to the people, you know, we're, we're moving around the roadways a little bit and we're, we're taking some grass away uh, to make the, the turns work, but we're also moving some of this equipment off of their, away from their property. So it, it kind of turned out to be a nice thing for them. And um, I, I thank the SMA's design team for, for doing that and to, for thinking about the neighbors as they're designing uh, in, in moving forward with this design. So I thought it was, it was, it was good for them to realize that that, um, you know, that box, we, we didn't have to move it closer to the house. We could actually move it further away. So it's kind of, it's a win-win. Thank you, Sean. All right. Um, then if there's no questions on that, we don't need a vote from the committee. It's just acknowledgement. And, um, and then Dr. Cron can, can sign the document we sent we um, sent out earlier today and send it over to the accounting department um, and then Biz will I'm sure call me if she has any questions. Um, all right, so uh, we have for the last couple months uh, been going through or the design team really going through and designing and pulling the building to the 60%. Uh, PMA has reviewed these drawings. Mark Shaw has uh, I know he's got a ton of stuff going on right now. We're trying to get ready for the school year, but Mark is also spent time, uh, I don't know when he found time to do it, but he did and put a ton of comments on the drawings. Uh, we feel that the drawings are in good shape and we feel that they are at 60% design submission level. And at that, we would recommend uh, for the committee to vote to uh, submit the 60% design submission uh, to the MSBA. Motion to, as you just stated. Motion to submit 60% design to MSBA, yep. Got a motion from Alan, do we get a second? Uh, I'll second. second. 
So you get a second from uh, Chris Bernica. So we'll take a, another roll call vote. Uh, Alan Cron? Yes. Chris Bernica? Yes. Jane Hackett? Yes. Trish Pass? Yes. Christine Flaherty? Yes. Julie Schaefer? Yes. Tim? Yes. Jill? Yes. Doug? Yes. Jared? Yes. Uh, Doug Lapp? I think Doug Lapp. Uh, we're both sorry. Yes. I already voted yes once. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Emily? Yes. Uh, Michelle? Yes. I believe that uh, I'm and uh, I'm a yes. I'm a yes. I don't know if you got me. Oh, and Mark, this is interesting. Big committee. Um, so that's unanimous on the uh, on the sixty percent drawings. Excellent. So we will. Uh, we're we're just wrapping up all of the. Uh, everything's been sent over to SMA. There. Wrapping up the formatting of it, packaging it up, and uh, it'll be good to go. And it'll, it'll be off to the MSBA likely tomorrow or Monday. Uh, it's a big package, and we want to make sure it's 100%. We don't want any comments. We've done a pretty good job in the last two packages, and we want to continue our, our good streak on that. Uh, so next steps. Oh, I'm sorry, unanticipated items first. So the only thing I wanted to bring up is, as I mentioned earlier, we are starting the environmental graphic design. Um, and our team of graphic designers have come up with some concepts. They're the same group who are doing the logo. So we've sort of waited on the logo and held off on that and figure we'll roll it into this portion of the project. Um, it, instead of waiting for a monthly building committee meeting, I thought it might be helpful if we could create a virtual focus group who would like to focus on this. Um, it will talk about materials on the wall, what those images are, what the content is, we're looking at branding each of the pods um, so that you know there's consistency and in information for wayfinding. We're looking at creating some sensory walls within the building, particularly outside some of the special education classrooms. So that all goes together into what we'll call an environmental graphic package that's part of the construction cost. It's right now within the construction estimate, but we need to generate those graphics and include those in the bid set. So was looking for some volunteers who might be willing to go on a couple of meetings, maybe one next week and one the week after to start looking at the content we've developed to provide some direction for us. And then we could present at the full building, next building committee meeting um, to the full committee with some of that content and those ideas. I would like to be on that committee if possible. I, I would like to, to Michelle Scheifele. I'd like to be on that committee as well. I would as well. Jill Maroney. So is that Jill, Michelle, Emily, and Julie? Yeah. Great. Lorraine, I don't want to make extra work for you, but we have a quite a, an exciting environmental engineering sort of program going at the high school. And I'm wondering, it, would it be okay if I had a, a super student sit in on a meeting of, of that group? I think they would find it fascinating. We would love that. We would love that, Alan. You're on mute, Alan. You're on mute. <laughs> if you share that with me at meeting information, I'll, I'll get a uh, hold of Angela Armstrong at the high school, and I'm sure she'll have a student that would love to sit in on that. That would be great. We would love that. Thank you. All right, so Thank I you. will get an appointment out sometime um, either tomorrow or early Monday for a virtual meeting next week. And um, I just want to let everybody know our graphic designer is hard of hearing, so she will usually do captions. Um, you do need to keep your video on. That's one thing we'll need to ask because she can read lips really well, um, but she needs to see you in order to read lips. She's a very talented graphic designer. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, everyone volunteering. So there's uh, there's one piece that I want to bring to everyone's attention, and some may, may already know this, um, but the town... Uh, we went out to bond um, a good portion of this project. Uh, and um, when we did the initial uh, estimates, uh, we used a interest rate of three and a half percent. And at that time, um, you know, we thought it was a good, uh, a good estimate. Uh, we wanted to be as uh, um, 
as accurate as we could be. Well, we just uh, we just got the information back uh, on the bond, uh, and it came in at 1.88 percent. So, what that means is that over eight million dollars in interest savings uh, at this point on the school project. Uh, that is a direct reduction to the taxpayers in town. You know, so when we gave this estimate at three point three and a half percent, which we thought was a very, very uh, good rate, um, you know, we came up with what the average taxpayer was gonna was gonna see in their uh, uh, in their increase in their property tax. Uh, but with an eight million dollar savings over the period of uh, thirty years, um, everyone's uh, everyone's payment for this school is uh, is gonna come in lower than what we anticipated. Um, and the interesting part, similar to uh, the high school, middle school project that happened to go through in, in 09, uh, when we were in the middle of a recession, um, and believe me, I wish COVID wasn't going on, um, this may actually bode well for the town as well financially, uh, for the school project. Other parts of the town, it's not, bo you know, not, as, not, as, uh, not as great. Uh, but this could be an advantage uh, to us on the school project. So I just wanted everyone to be aware of that. Uh, the financial team working with the school department uh, has done a tremendous job to be able to keep our bond rating where it is and uh, get us that um, incredible interest rate. Great. That's, ter that's terrific news, Rich. Thank you. Thank you, Rich, for all your hard work and our team at the town hall. I didn't do anything, Joe. <laughs> Thanks you had to have done something. You brought it to us. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There's a lot of people involved, and it's it's just it's it's uh, it's it's a little bit of good news in a uh, in what has been months and months of uh, crappy news. So I hear you. Make sure they we that they know we say thank you. So if there's, uh, if there's nothing else, uh, is there anything on the next steps? Uh, here we go. Uh, just, just showing where we're at uh, right now, um, at starting on Friday, SMA is gonna start uh, with that positive vote. They're gonna start working on their 90% set. Um, so, so they're gonna be at that until late September. And then we do our es estimating from September to early October. We'll go through a uh, VE and rec reconciliation. If, if we need to, we'll, we'll talk about removing items. Uh, hopefully the bids and the estimates continue to come in on budget and we don't have to take anything out of the project. Um, and then we're gonna submit to the MSBA late October uh, and kind of concurrent to that, we're gonna start our trade prequal like we talked about um, sometime around uh, October 9th is when we're gonna send out the package and we'll also pre-qualify our general contractors at the same time. Um, so our goal over the next, PMA's goal will be setting up that RFP package for um, a qualification package for all of the sub trades and the general contractor. So it goes out on, on the 9th and we'll spend the time after that reviewing all of the trade contractors getting ready for, ready for bid. The one thing I will say is that now, I, I, I've said it a couple of times throughout this project is it, it moves fast and it's gonna keep moving fast. We are very close and before you know it, we're actually gonna be out to bid and we're gonna know what this is really gonna cost and we're gonna break ground uh, on this new school. So. It's a very exciting time. It's been a long journey, I know, for a lot of people, but it, it, it seems like only yesterday we were t talking about a vote for this, and now we're talking about 90% drawings and uh, getting contractors on board. So it's very exciting for us. I hope everyone on your team's exciting. Uh, we appreciate all your hard work and support in the project, and we're really looking forward um, to building the school. Great. Can I ask a quick question? John, thank you. Uh, yeah, Doug, Doug had a question, right? Yeah, just super quick, and it's probably maybe a little premature, and you may have already said this, but Sean, are you thinking about doing electronic bidding? Uh, I think we will probably be in that um, zone. We've done it on a lot of other projects, even without COVID, right. um, just because it, it's so much easier. I mean, right. I, I remember the days of binders and binders full right. of bids, and uh, literally, I, I have boxes of binder clips from all of the uh, subcontractors that I've, I still use to this day, but uh, we've talked to the uh, uh, the AG's office and the bid desk at DCAM, and all of them have agreed that um, you do not have to uh, give out paper copies and you do not have to accept paper bids. So we there's a couple of different companies that we use um, to do this uh, because it's it's a very good system. 
anyone who gets a copy of the drawings, they have to log into their system, any addenda, they automatically get updated. And then they also get all of the bids and contractors are actually allowed to take off their bids, resubmit a bid up until the closing time. And then at the closing time, they hit a button and everybody sees everybody's bid automatically. So it complies with the public bid opening. We don't have to sit there and read through every single bid allowed. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. It makes our life a lot easier. It makes the, the paperwork a lot easier and everybody can have access to all of the bids immediately. Um, it's pretty exciting when you set a bid date because we're, we're literally sitting there in front of our computer hitting refresh on the website. Uh, and then when it happens, I know Lorraine is going to call me or I'm going to call her instantly and say, oh, what did, you know, what did we get for this? What did we get for this? Because we've done it before together. And it's, um, it, it's kind of like Christmas, Hope, you know, in, anticipation and nervousness of opening uh, those bid packages um, the, for the trade contractors. And then two weeks later, we'll do the same thing for the general contractor. No, that, that's great because that's what I was hoping you'd say because I've, okay. I've used that in my previous um, place. And it, yeah. works, it works great. And I'm just trying to avoid having – crates and crates of uh, documents up here at town hall. So that'd be 100%. Great. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone has any objections to that, please let us know. Otherwise I, I, we're going to suggest that um, we'll suggest it at bid time, but there's no, no sense in hiding. We're, we're going to definitely suggest doing that. It works very well. And at this point, contractors and subcontractors have been doing it long enough. Uh, you know, four or five years ago, we got worried that, you know, maybe we're uh, some of the smaller contractors uh, that have smaller scopes of work might not know how to do it. And then we, are we losing contractors? But I, we don't think that's the case anymore. We we see good uh, engagement from all contractors, and um, I, I think that's the right thing to do. Anyone? Uh, we haven't talked about any file sub bids. Uh, when's that going out? Uh, the file sub bid packages are. Let's see. Prequal trade bidding is January sixth, two thousand twenty-one. So it'll be sometime uh, around the first of the year. We tip. We could probably pull it back, but we, d we don't like to do that around uh, the holidays. So we like to get the holidays out of the way and uh, it should give us, it gives us enough time for a March start to get the, the trade contractors and the GC and, and if there's some bid protests and it gives us enough window uh, to make sure we can uh, hit the ground, uh, break ground in March when we plan to. All right. Thanks. Thank you. All right, Sean, is that it? That, that's all I got. I'm here. If, uh, if anyone has any questions, um, we're certainly, I, I'm, I'm here as long as you need me. Lorraine, uh, anything else from your side? Nope. That's everything from us. Thank you, Rich. Uh, thanks, Before PMA. Yes, MMA. Nice work. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your help. Yeah, really yeah Rich, if I could just say, we, we really Thanks. appreciate both of you. We appreciate you, Lorraine and Sean, and the work that you've been doing since Thanks, this Rich. whole thing started. It's nice to have such pros uh, working hard at this. Last week, you thanked me for, for the, my work behind the scenes, but we need to thank you because you guys have been outstanding. So thank you. I appreciate that. But just everyone knows it's not just me. I've got Mitch is here with us and we've got some other people behind the scenes at PMA. So, um, and I know Lorraine's got a big group of team behind her and all of them have been absolutely fantastic. So um, it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of people. And um, you know, this committee has been very supportive and um, it's been a great committee to work with and uh, you guys know what you want and we're hoping that we're providing what you, what you want. And this is going to be a fantastic school. You're going to love it. Marianne was leading a team of about 20 working on this project. So it's, uh, it's keeping a lot of people busy and we've been able to keep it going virtually just like you have in your day job. So she's doing a tremendous job. Hmm. All right. With that, um, I'll take a uh, motion. Uh, to uh, dissolve the meeting. Good. Got a motion, got a second. Second. Got a second by Emily. Um, I'll take a roll call vote. I think we've lost a couple of people, but uh, Christine? Yes. Julie? Yes. Tim? Yes. Jill? Yes. Alan? Yes. Mark? Yes. Doug? Yes. Uh, Chris Panica. Yes. Doug, I, I did it again. So I, I <laughs> we got the double on the Doug. Both Doug we're both, we're both yeses. <laughs> Sorry. We're assuming you're going alphabetically, but you got to tell us if you're not. No, I'm going on the screen. Uh, so Emily Davidson. Yes. Jared. Yes. Uh, Michelle. Yes. And Jane. Yes. 
So with that, thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate it. Stay safe, and uh, we'll talk soon.